speak with them and then I'll pick a date which is convenient to you sometime next week and come back and uh, agree uh, on what to agree. But we remain committed to continuing to doing what we've been doing to them, that saw their growth and development. And little wonder now there are new airlines every day coming into the country. ValueJet has just started, Umda started, and many more. Um, so we'll continue to give them our support. Regarding the Emirates uh, or the UAE Nigeria relationship, um, it may seem to be something within the confines of civil aviation. Uh, I would like to say that in this case, it is tangentially related to the matter. There were, if I may use the word correctly, which I disagree with, I don't like the word, but because it's being used around the world, I will use it, blocked funds in Nigeria. The meaning of blocked funds is that the airlines have signed an agreement with Nigeria through the bilateral air service agreement or multilateral air service agreement that once they make their money here in Nigeria and the net of the money when they remove those they will need to run their offices, they should be free to remit the money back to their country. And so also any Nigerian entity doing business anywhere should also have the, um, um, the liberty to remit the money by law back to Nigeria. Azumi Airpies or anybody, Umza, that is doing business in Niger or in Canada. So for the money to pile, it's not new. Um, when we came in in 2016, we found out that some about $460 million was uh, blocked in Nigeria. And at that time, we were under recession. But because we are up to our own commitments, Mr. President directed and approved, and the monies were found and given to them, all of it, in three trenches. And the mechanism was asked to be put in place in such a way that the monies would not be trapped. Then we went through another cycle of recession, plus COVID, plus doing the revenue, and so on. And the foreign exchange became extremely very scarce, not only for airline operations, but for other operations. So Nigeria went into a challenging time. And so we pleaded with all the airlines around the world that they should see the situation that Nigeria is in and to give us time to be able to repay this money like we did. We have demonstrated that we, are, we honor our obligations and we did it in the past. So this one took time. And most airlines and most countries, almost all countries except UAE, have understood the situation in Nigeria and are hoping that the monies are going to be found. And Mr. President has already been very categorical on this, and I think Central Bank and their own local bankers here are working hard to find this money and pay. And the CBN governor had said that between now and the end of the year, the substantial amount of the money will be paid. Perhaps almost all, according to him, and before the Senate and before the House of Representatives. So, but my concern is um, countries go through war, they go through other unnatural causes. They go through force major. And uh, the thing should be that there should be mutual understanding of each other. But at the slightest of irritation, at the slightest of irritation, then we get these things from UAE that we are not coming to Nigeria, we will ban you from Nigeria, you will ban visa. They've done it once, they did it twice, they did it three times. These are things that are not self-inflicted. These are things that happen to our country. And as a sovereign, perhaps they should look a bit more because this market, this Nigerian market, is a market that they need. We need their service, no doubt about that, but they, are, they need our market more. Yeah. So um, we are working hard to ensure that this money be paid. CBN and the bankers and the banks as well are also doing their very best. We are assuring you that this money, as the CBN governor said, will be paid before the end of the year, almost all of it but that they should exercise restraint and treat Nigeria for the value that it has. Is, say again? Well, it's not even a bully, really. It's, uh, it's not even a bully as I see it. I see it that they have an important market, Nigeria. There's no more market in aviation. I don't know anyone else in aviation is good in Nigeria. Because the distinguished Senator Allah was in the House of Reps in 2003. 
when we summoned British Airways to ask them, why is it that the ticket from Abuja to London is more expensive than the ticket from Accra to London? And Accra is farther. And the man has the audacity to tell us that because Nigerians can afford. And I was chairing the meeting. I walked him out. But my working him out at that time didn't solve matters. And it's true that Nigerians can afford. Because why? Because they pay. But that we are paying does not mean that you should take advantage of us paying. And if we are able to establish this airline and to grow also domestic airlines to build the capacity to also give an international seamless efficient service, then we have many, very many airlines in the country doing this service. They will not do that, do that to us. Um, but they should see us as sovereign, they, they should see us as a market that they need, and they should treat us as so, and as such. So, but the, having said that, we're working hard to ensure that these monies, because they are lawful monies, and they are remitted. Thank you very much. His uh, clarity of mind and uh, tenacity to whatever he believes in. Um, on this note, the Honorable Minister, you are not acquitted. You are just discharged, and uh, we will call on you if we have other reasons to do that before this budget is wrapped up. But we will expect that you will wait for us a bit while we round up uh, this meeting. But uh, on behalf of all my colleagues, I thank all the